The Oaks has a moderate run to the first turn, but a big field by non-derby standards. And several have similar stalking running styles. Phillies drawn outside could lose quite a bit of ground. Affirmative Lady moved forward to a decent top of two, but hasn't gotten any faster this year. In her last, she saved ground, which made her effort look better than it really was, and she's not fast enough here. And Tell Me No Lies has yet to bounce as she moved forward slightly each time. There's a good chance she'll move forward again, but she would need a big jump just to be competitive, and that's unlikely. Botanical didn't show much early, but she's gotten much better, and her last two put her in range of getting a piece of this. But all of her races have been on grass or synthetic, so she would need not only to handle dirt, but improve on it. It's not impossible, but we wouldn't count on it. Ken McPeak's barn started heating up a couple of months ago, and when that happens, he gets new tops and bunches. Defining purpose has run a new or pair top in all her starts, but she jumped forward quite a bit last time to win the Ashland. She's unlikely to move forward again right away, but since that top only represents three points of development from her two-year-old top, there's some chance she can pair that effort, which would put her in it. Hardcore Candy had produced slow to mediocre runners until Darth Vader came along. This filly kept getting better as a two-year-old and threw a big one at Gulfstream two back but she came a long way to get there, so that effort is likely to knock her out for a while. Flying Connection got better recently when she started going two turns, but she would have to improve to threaten here. Gambling Girl will be making her 10th start in the Oaks. She ran a new top last time, but after all that work, making another forward move right away is unlikely, and she would need one. Who's your filly has been overrated from the start, and at this point, her pattern is terrible. Dreaming of Julia ran the best figure we've ever given a filly, and her first fall won this race. Julia Shining is a full sister to Malathat, and while she's not as fast as mom or sis yet, she did run a couple of decent figures as a two-year-old and moved forward last time in the Ashland she earned the best figure in the race after adjusting for her wide trip. We expect her to run her lease as well this time. Pletcher has clearly been pointing her for this. She has to avoid another wide trip, but Julia clearly has the highest ceiling of anyone in the Oaks. Mimi Kakushi has never gone back, but she's also never run fast enough to contend with these. With a good pattern and lots of time, she could run a new top but contending would require a big jump. Pretty Mischievous is the first of the two Godolphin fillies. This one jumped to a new top in February, then paired that effort in the Fairgrounds Oaks in defeat. She lost ground on both turns relative to the winner and earned almost as good a figure. A pair of tops is a good pattern for a three-year-old, and with six weeks rest, we don't see why she shouldn't run at least as well this time. Pretty mischievous is a very strong contender. Ray Handel has been going well recently, and he got a new top out of Promiser America last time. But that was a big jump, and a bounce is more likely than a second jump, which she would need. Maybe it was the throat operation she reportedly had over the winter, or maybe Southland was just one of many Norm Cassie runners that exploded over the last few months. Regardless, she jumped way forward in February, then again last time, and an inside trip with others racing wide made it look even better. There is no way to handicap this filly. In conventional thoroughgraph terms, she's coming off a three and a half point top that is 11 points better than a two year old top and should bounce. But the way Cassie is going, who knows? The good news is she'll be a square price, so it's easy enough to throw her in with the ones we like. Taxed wasn't much last year and is better now, but after developing six points, she is still short of competitive. It's hard to believe she has more improvement in her right away. Since they took the blinkers off the alley's look in her third start, she's run nothing but tops. 
He's also had a lot of wide trips. That a weak looking effort last time actually earned a pretty good figure. He says she was about as wide as you can be in a five horse field. This filly has a good pattern, competitive figures, and good timing into this. She might be ready for a new top, and she'll be a price. But we will like her much better if she draws inside. Which brings us to the key handicapping questions for this year's Oaks. Wet paint showed moderate ability last year, hit a new level over the winter at Oak Lawn, then jumped forward again last time. Yes, she's never gone back, and yes, that last is as good a figure as anyone here has run. But it's not only a three-point new top, it represents seven points of development from her two-year-old top. There's almost no chance she goes forward again right away, Godolphin notwithstanding, and she's more likely to bounce than pair up. And even if she can avoid the bounce, she'll have to deal with coming from, from far back in a big field. Wet paint is a vulnerable favorite. Wonder Wheel is a classic, precocious into mischief. She ran a big one for a July two-year-old filly, but hasn't gotten any faster since, and went back last time when she, when she should have gone forward. This one's not for us. The bottom line of the Oaks is that the big winners of the draw were South Lawn and the Alley's look, because not only did they draw well, the main competition drew terrible. Pretty mischief is still worth using at a price but she's much less exciting from out there. The Alley's look also won by subtraction. Saez tends to lose ground on come from behind horses, and he was responsible for those wide trips at fairgrounds. We like to switch to Castellano. I think this filly is the value in the race. The other contenders are South Lawn, Defining Purpose, Pretty Mischievous, and Julia Shining, if she draws in and can avoid a terrible trip. Wet Paint is a contender as well but she's a major underlay at a short price.